Okay. What's up, all you minchies? This is the Uncanny Omar, and with me is this guy right here. Rob 64, how's it going? Keep gaming. <laughs> nope, that's the ending. <laughs> well, oh, sorry. sorry. <laughs> happy, happy gaming day. How y'all doing? Good to hear you. That's it. So, <laughs> sorry, we're a little bit late. We had a little bit of technical difficulties. Rob had to put up his uh, Mario stickers in the back. Check out these Mario Just... stickers. Aren't they dope? <laughs> <laughs> I feel like I just entered a kid's room. Uh, you're not wrong. <laughs> Look, so, look, look at the amiibo up there too, man. We're rolling big. Yeah, I see them. They're actually uh, being used for the purpose they were made for. To uh, to be, be hung? hung up somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So today we're going to be talking about some of the hauls that we've had in March. Um, March was actually my birthday month, so I got a couple of video games. And something amazing for my buddy Kyle. What's up, JSC Say What? Happy Thursday to you, brother. So I know we're gonna be talking about one big game that I assume Rob has in his hands. Um, it's this game called Stern Arcade Classics. That's this is the your, one. This is That's your pinball one. game on Xbox. All right. So <laughs> without further ado, Rob sixty four, why don't you start? What would uh, what are some of the things that you picked up, and then we okay. can talk about some of the things we're excited for and the ridiculousness of that PS five controller. Oh my gosh, that looks sexy. So it's March. Again, happy birthday, Omar. I think I said that on your birthday, but happy birthday. And you did. Cool stuff. Look, there is paint on me. I was painting, uh, doing painting, because, you know, we're doing social distancing. We're trying to be use the technology to meet with people. But it also means we get time to do a lot of home projects. So, yeah, I've been painting, putting up shelves, uh, and putting up Amiibo, as you can see back there. So I've been a little bit hard at work, a little bit of work. I better see that tour by the, before summer. I better um, see that video game tour. <laughs> You might see a shelf, like I pan down on a shelf, and that's like what you see. Uh, no, that's going to happen. That's going to happen once we get everything done. I'm, I, I want it to look nice. I want it to look nice. So March was a big release, a huge release month. And what's up, Lionheart? What's up, Lionheart? Thank Love you all for joining. Sean, happy late birthday. Thank you, brother. Thank you so much. Thank you, Andrew. I'll be enjoying Six Gun Comic because Six Gun is a great comic book. So, <laughs> all right, man. What do you? Sure, what sure, did, sure. What did so you get? The big two. So I want to see anyone in the comments who picked these up. March 20th was a huge day in gaming. We got two games. We got two games. Oh, sorry. I have to street stretch and reach. What's up, Michael? Yeah. There's my boy cruising through space. What is up? So first game that came out March 20th is Doom. Oh, no, Rob, Rob, you want to say goodnight? Is that what you want to do? All right. You say goodnight. Goodnight. Good night. All right, and get your butt to bed. Te quiero. Night, now. night, night, night. Yeah. Continue. Yes, sir. So, Doom sixty four. This you is got sweet. two copies that no, are no, sealed. No, no, shush. <laughs> First of all, yes, <laughs> <laughs> I do plan. Okay, all right. Real talk. This is just a skill box. If you pre purchase at Best Buy, you got a skill box, and also you got a download code for Doom sixty four, which I have over there. Which is this is the first time Doom sixty four has been remade and redone on a modern system, so that's really cool. So this is Doom Eternal, and no, I have not opened it quite yet. I am going to because I love the original Doom that came out. Well, I love the original Doom and Doom two. Uh, if you use something called DOSBox, you can play those today. But the Doom that came out in twenty sixteen, I played the snot out of. I absolutely loved it. Played it on PlayStation four Pro and was fantastic, wonderful. So this one is even more fun. More platforming, more monsters. It, it was supposed to be great. So I have not had a chance to open it, but this is one of those games that I 100% will start playing after the other game that I'm going to play, which I'm going to show you all later. So Doom Eternal, this is really, 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 really a big deal. Anyone in the comments picked up this game? If, and tell me what you think. Cruising I, through space. There you go. Cruising Whoa. through space. He knows what's up. So the second one. What's up, Matthew? Did you want to go or you want me to go first? Elliot. Game? No, I, I don't have that much, but okay. you, you could go ahead. All right, I'll do these two, and then we'll go to the third thing. Because I believe it or not, in Mars, there really wasn't that much that I got other than the big thing. So the second game that came out, same day. Same day. So I was in Best Buy a lot that day. Well, I wasn't in, actually, no. Yes, I was in Best Buy, because the weekend right before they shut down our Best Buy, and we're doing curbside pickup only. So this was the last, and they only let in 10 people at a time to go get their stuff. So the second game is... Aminal Crossing for the Switch. Now, I, I, there's two things I want to see in the comments. The first thing I want to see is who picked up this game. I already saw one guy pick this up. Thank you for picking this up. 
I get I make no commission on this. <laughs> <laughs> but the second question is, did you pick up a second switch for Animal Crossing? Because one of my coworkers is going gaga trying to find another switch. Oh, there First you go. First time playing AC and I'm hooked. Absolutely. So, Sean wants it. Sean, you should totally buy this game. Absolutely should buy this yeah, game. Sure. If, you know, re- adult responsibilities aren't enough, you owe money now to a raccoon. Well, so, <laughs> so go I, for it. But this is the thing. So, in literally, regard- literally, I picked up Animal Crossing, Andrew. I didn't buy it. I prefer Mortal Kombat. Mortal Kombat! <laughs> Considering that second switch there you for, go. The, for the like pastel color controllers. No, 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 no. So well, the reason that I asked if you have a second switch is because when you get this for your switch, even if you have like in my house, everyone has even the baby has a switch account, but you only get one island and everyone has to share it. So like. I don't know how I feel about like, you know, my wife and my I, my wife, you know, I think she would be okay. But I don't know how about I feel my kids all of a sudden pulling up all my weeds and flowers and planting things and things like that. So it's like, mm, so I'm tempted to get a second switch, but I don't know if I'm going to fall. <laughs> what is wrong with you? No, no. So this is what I did. So this is actually what I did. <laughs> Hold on. I am so sorry, silent agent 69. <sighs> I'm sorry. Yeah. It sucks. We've all been there, though. And we, we've literally been there. Some of us are going through it as we speak right now. So Absolutely. I understand. But but check this out. This game will be available when you get a job. I guarantee, I know you'll find something else to do. And when you do, you can reward yourself with Animal Crossing. No, do not buy Animal Crossing. Reward yourself <laughs> with Mortal Kombat. <laughs> I have seen Final Fantasy VII outfits in Animal Crossing. Have you, Rob? Uh, let's see. The last one I saw, what did I see? Who did I see? I don't that's know. Right. I don't know if it's Final Fantasy VII, but I totally saw someone crossplay. I was like, oh, okay, that that's very creative use. So I'm trying to get a second one. Oh, the wife and I can't. Exactly. You got to get a second gra- one. That's grounds for divorce. It is. It is. So also, if you pick this up at Best Buy, you got this little bag. What does that do? Well, it is a drawstring bell bag. Look, watch me open it. Watch me open. Oh, it. you are watch such me. a rebel. <laughs> So inside this bag, you can put your bells. How about that? Put your bells in there. Yeah, I don't know what that's for. The that second, bag, you're going to put your weed in. Is what put you're my, do. <laughs> this is public. People will know. DL. <laughs> okay. The second thing that you could also get is a phone tech badge. So this is you can put this. How how did you get both of them? Some poor kid didn't get their pre-order bonus because you got both of these stupid things. I, do you know how many games I buy at Best Buy, right? A lot. So, yes, I have them both. <laughs> and this one I'll probably use. I'll probably put this on my Pixel. I wonder where the Pixel is. Yeah, here you go. Put that on the Pixel. That looked beautiful, right? So, so there you my go. coworkers at Best Buy made blue shirts and Animal Crossing. That's pretty oh, cool. Gosh, that's <laughs> fantastic. That's really cool. At the, so you can be reminded where you go to work. <laughs> so, yeah, okay, all right, so person that just made the comment let's see andrew andrew is your best buy doing curbside uh curbside service or are you guys letting people in it's a good question uh rob's a value customer I, every time i hear curbside service i feel dirty like i'm pulled yeah. i should get anything i'm buying with a in a brown bag <laughs> <laughs> and then go directly to the health department so how this works to get my booster you- shot <laughs> So those of you all who are not familiar with Best Buy practices, what you do, since you can't go into the store because, you know, we're trying to be safe, socially distance stuff, when your order is available for pickup, you they send you an email and you push a button in the email that says, hey, I'm here, and you type some text that describes the car that you're in. So usually I say, I'm a black dude in a black car, or I'm in my wife's car in a black dude, and I'm a black dude. And you're in a black like, dude. I'm the black dude. <laughs> <laughs> and they they come out and they bring it to me. But most of the time they know who I am since I'm there a lot anyway. So they're like, oh, let me go get Rob's crap and bring it to him. But it's actually a really cool service. It's, we're just doing curbside pickup and shipping orders. Okay. Yeah, the yeah. same thing everybody I think is doing. Yeah. Rob is a valued customer. I do buy a lot of. He does. He does. Uh, like, like kids have gone without diapers. Like they only happened without- one time and we just flipped the diaper inside out and shook it and it was fine. And you could use that little bag that your little amigo yeah. There you go. This is my dime bag, to baby. A diaper. <laughs> All right. Uh, All right. Your turn, buddy. So I got a couple things. Uh, first, shout out to my buddy Kyle. Birthday. What's up, Kyle? Uh, Always. He got me a couple of things, man. Uh, this is pretty cool. One of them being the Guilty Gear Anniversary Edition. 
Oh my now, gosh. That's now awesome. this this is getting a legit release. Not legit. Not that this is not legit. This is just from overseas. Who always ends up getting the better release of these things? This is getting an American release here. Uh, but this is you know it's already in English so. And we had no idea that it was coming. So he got me this. And this comes with, of course. Why are you opening things? A little art book. Oh, that's beautiful. Which I'm a big fan of little art books. So it's are, got, we gonna uh, get, are we going to get the art book? Do you know? I don't think so. I think it's a metal case. That's it. That's all it is. Uh, and you have to pre-order it now. I think it's from Not Limited Run, Not Special Reserve. It's something else. It's another company. Um, Sean Sullivan, thank you so much for... Be kind words. I just want to say y'all make me feel better during this lockdown. This lockdown sucks. It does. And we're going to get through this together, man, by talking about comic books and video games and all this crap you know, <laughs> that we're into. That finally watch- comes in handy. Now that we can- <laughs> Ooh, look at that. Wait, is the is the dude with the yo-yo a dude or a chick? I can't remember. That's a dude, I think. I think that's a dude. Not that it matters. Yeah. Don't be you know. don't be so sexist. Don't be so sexist. That wasn't yeah. sexist. That was literally a question. I couldn't remember. <laughs> you know, it is true. It's very game. cool. It's very cool that, you know, we as gamers, we as comic book lovers, like we get a chance to actually enjoy some of these things. Like, yeah, we might have work to do or have to deal with kids in school or whatever, but like you know, we have a chance to actually enjoy it and play the games. And can, uh, can you imagine the poor schmucks that are just into sports? Da-na-na, da-na-na. Like they like there's no sports. Now they understand what we feel like when Firefly was canceled. What are we gonna do with our lives? <laughs> so we're in Kentucky and Kentucky basketball is like the thing. Even me as a video gamer and not and a big old thick glasses nerd. Like I'm not into sports other than NCAA college basketball. That is my thing. So the fact that Kentucky shut down college basketball, that's a, that should tell you that stuff got real. And so yeah, like what are we supposed to do? It's supposed to be it was supposed to be March Madness. Like we didn't do anything. It was it was terrible. And then all pictures in my Google photos are like, this is what you were doing last year. We're drinking and eating, shooting hoops. Like ah. it's okay. We'll get through it together. So the wizard. On you Blu-ray. got that? Nice. <laughs> Mine collect- does not look like that. The collector's edition, which comes with a little little slip, right? Oh. My well, case, but look at that cover. That my daughter, my daughter, <laughs> my daughter saw this and they were like, "Can we play that?" And I said, "Yes, yes, we can." Because before the age of the internet and YouTube and some PewDiePie guy reviewing and unveiling something, we had to go to the movie theaters mm-hmm. to see the very first taste of Super Mario Brothers three. Mm-hmm. That was in the movie The Wizard. Rob and I quote this movie all the time. It's ridiculous. It's so stupid, but we love it. It's great. I, I don't care. It's amazing. <laughs> I said to my kid the other day, I said the other day, man, because I have the power glove. Right? I was like, man, this is so bad. And she goes, why is it bad, Daddy? What's wrong with it? Like, it's so bad. It's so bad. I'm like, crap. I need to explain. Like, you know, bad is good back then, but good is bad. That's good. Uh, <laughs> Jordan Russo, Jordan Trusso asked a great question. Is Rob the only black dude in the state? No, my brother lives here. <laughs> his brother is the only black guy though hi guys nice to catch another stream thank you so much dj yo yo is a good question before you go on to the, your yes. next set of games what is your preferred console to play games on are you a well-rounded fan or do you have to go I, my go-to system right now is easy that's the switch because i am a family man and i can take that wherever i want to and then uh i love to play but i am playing last guardian on finally on the ps4 and i have an xbox that i fire up from time to time are you kids crying with the last guardian no what about you rob what is your preferred console it's a good question this actually is a really good question um it depends it depends no, no, so just one answer damn it no i can't give you one answer it depends on what it is if it is a game that doesn't require like a high polygon ha- count or high frame weight I will go for the Switch. So, for example, when I got, um, what did I get? Let's say, I'm forgetting, uh, 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 Bloodstained, Bloodstained, Circle of the Moon. Or I'm playing I'm playing that right now. Yeah, so I've got that on the Switch primarily because while it is a 3D game using the Unreal Engine, and it does technically run better on the other consoles, it's not one of those things where it needs like the highest resolution and frame rate to get the game going. So stuff like that, I'll go for the Switch because it's portable. If games are multi-platform, my man Freddy, get that Fantastic Four. Behold, Galactus. That thing is huge, man. It's a freaking beast of a book. Go ahead, Rob. Sorry, no, you're, you're big fine. nerd. You're big nerd. I broke your train of thought. No, 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 no. no. It doesn't take much. So, if something is multi-platform, like Doom, 
I will usually get it on. It, actually, well, again, it depends. Like Doom, I would get on Xbox because the Xbox version performed Xbox One X version performs better than the PlayStation Pro. So I got Doom on the Xbox. However, then there's some games that perform better on PlayStation Pro. So Resident Evil 3, I will likely get on the PlayStation Pro. So it really depends on the game. And so whenever he, games come out... He's I, a well-rounded fan. He's a well-rounded fan. That's what he wanted to know. I need to do the research to figure out what game... the. I'm not about resolution. I'm more about frame rate. Whichever game system hits 60 frames a second, most consistently, that's the system I'll go for. I find that book size intimidating. <laughs> <laughs> that's your popping up on IST damage cell more than once. Probably, man, because that book must be a bitch to ship. You I'm can't... Sure like Galactus, right? Well, uh, you've been in my house, so it's like the size of the Marvels and Jim Lee XXL. It's a huge book. Yeah. So those books are almost impossible to ship. Like, I have no idea how they ship them without hurting them. He didn't mention PC gaming. Fake fan. Fake okay. fan. Okay. Actually, so that was the next. Uh, oh, oh, shit. Actually. Oh, shit, critique. Shit got real. He said, actually. <laughs> <laughs> Anytime a nurse says, actually, you know, things about to get down. So thank you for showing your games off. My next one is. Oh, can I reach it? Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold here on. I am, alone by myself. What is up, Michael Lombardo? Thank you for joining us. Thank you, everybody, for joining us for this live video game thing that we do every every week. There we go. Cheek, do you like Phil Collins? I cannot see a thing, so I'm just hoping I'm looking at the screen. What the hell am I looking at? All right, hold on a second. Let me highlight you. <laughs> so, the next game that I have to so as I told you, March 20th was a huge time. I feel ridiculous with this thing. I actually feel like I should turn it on. Maybe I could see a little bit better. March 20th was a huge day in gaming with Doom and Animal Crossing. March 23rd was the next huge thing. Half-Life Alex. We haven't seen a Half-Life game in 13 years. Now, I am not, as Pratiki just, just pointed out, I am not a PC gamer. But there have been three times where I've purchased a PC and a PC hardware for a specific game. One of those times was Half-Life 2. The other one was Doom 3, and I forgot the third one. Quake 3, maybe? So it's not very often that I go and buy hardware specifically for a PC game. Because most of the time, I have all the consoles. Most PC games are ported to console, and I just just not my thing. Oh, it works. Dude, look, look at my fingers. Yeah, I can totally see you guys. Virtual reality is so real. Okay, so for Half-Life Alex, I... After this, the pandemic is going on, jobs are kind of like we've had to really lock down our expenses. So I couldn't go out and buy a gaming PC. But I did have a bunch of gift cards where I can go you know, in on an Oculus Quest at Amazon. All right, I'm going to buy an Oculus Quest, and then I'm going to find a PC to play this game you just, you just keep getting called out. Everybody in the chat is like, hey, Omar, hey, Rob. Shaking my head, he did forget about the PC, the Master Race. <laughs> LOL. <laughs> you still CJ Joe awesome. Joe said this is so weird. What are you looking at in there? Actually, what I'm looking at is the Quest... Pass keep, keep your hands where I can see them. I know the kind of games you're into. The Quest has a pass-through feature, so I actually can see sort of kind of like my keyboard and things right around me. But uh, if I do this, it goes back to, um, oh, I'm in virtual reality. Crazy. All right. All right. We can't the see point, that. The point is, the point, and I can share this. I can share what I see on the screen, which is kind of neat. So what I did was I feel like I've got most of this paid with Amazon gift cards, so I got an Oculus Quest. I used a USB cable that I already had lying around, and I already had Alex in my Steam library because of uh, Valve was giving away all their Steam, all their software at some point. And I found, I borrowed a yep, cruising through USB space knows. And so I played Half Life Alex all the way through 42 hours, and it is the most a. It just it wasn't a VR. It's, there's a point to this. Yes, there's a point to this because I'm talking about the games that came out in March. This is part of my haul. I don't have a physical thing to show you, but I can show you this. Best for Wait, we could lie and say I bought this digitally. <laughs> <laughs> I could say that, couldn't I? I bought every game digitally, I couldn't. I? Yeah, that's funny. I could say that. So if you not for the, if you have a means of playing Half Life, Alex, not only is it a fantastic Half Life game, it took me forty hours to get through the thing, and also really utilizes VR. And like there was several times where I was trying to shoot a dude, and I leaned into like what I thought was a wall, but 
in the wall in the game and there's actually not a wall because I was in like, you know, my room and I fell on my head. It's hilarious. Another time I went to grab something up high and I ended up hitting something like, oh my gosh, this is so real. Like, no, I just hit like the light or something because I was reaching too high. It's a fantastic, immersive, great puzzles. It's creepy, scary, great story, tr- twists, everything you love about Half-Life. So, so that's my second game for the, or I guess third game for the March Hall is Half-Life Alex. So if you have a means to get it, I recommend a Quest and a USB cable. We can talk. I can put links to the USB cables that you can use. It's one of the most amazing experiences I've ever had. The bar has been raised for VR games. That's that. That's all I'm gonna say about that. Half Life Alex. Okay. Um, I can't hear a thing you're saying. Do you guys think esports and Twitch streaming has helped or hindered with the stereotype of what people think of the general gamer? Rob, I'll let you take. To that, because um, I'd like to know what you think. Because I don't okay. know, I don't really have an answer. Uh, I, I do. Um, I think it's absolutely helped. Well, I don't know necessarily the stereotype of what p- t- typical gamers are. I don't think so because you, there used to be oh the guys who are playing video games are the big okay we are nerds in this channel right now. Wait, wait, what? Yeah, no. exactly. Yeah, I'm talking about no. you. I'm talking about no. you. I'm very um, cool. <laughs> whatever. <laughs> I was cool. I, I drink bourbon with cranberry juice, sir. I beg the You are definitely not cool. You are disrespectful to the to the juice. I'm so, disrespectful to cranberry. <laughs> so on one end you could say, all right, so now like that stereotype of the dude who keeps the keyboard on his belly is playing a game, that goes away. So we see a lot of variety, a wide variety of streamers and we play with esports and Twitch. So I M- absolutely think yes. Yeah, it is. <laughs> Tap on the side. <laughs> um, I absolutely think Twitch and East and streamers and esports have brought a positive light and more exposure to gamers and all the different types of gamers. Because everyone in this chat right now, I guarantee you, everyone looks different, has different preferences of games. They they're they're not your typical atypical gamer from what we might have th- seen in the '90s or whatever. So the fact that Twitch. And streamers and have brought like exposure to there's hey there's more than one specific type of gamer i'm like look at omar and i we are ethnic and we are gamers and we are not what you would typically think of seeing one walking down the street omar needs to be canceled for his drink <laughs> guys i don't judge anybody for drinking I, it's just what I've grown accustomed to. You are doing it wrong. We'll talk about this later. I worked at a distillery. You worked at the distillery. You should know better. <laughs> I don't give a shit about bourbon. <laughs> so I think streamers, Twitch, Mixer. We all great blobs. Look at that reference from Fairly Odd Parents. Very nice, Freddie. That's pretty right, nice. I think ahead. it absolutely had a positive effect because we're seeing young streamers, old streamers, male, female, uh, trans bisexual, whatever. Every type of streamer is represented when and they're, we're all playing video games. We're all having fun. So, yeah, I think Twitch and e- e- esports and everything has really brought a wonderful spin to gamers. And now that everyone's staying at home, everyone's playing video games, everyone's getting better and smashing my scores. Whatever. It's fine. I'll get over it. All right, Omar, what you got? Did you guys oh. read Asterisk Warhammer 40K animated episode? I, I did not see that. That's cool. Uh, don't drink and read comics. It's not that. It's not that bad though. I, I kind of enjoyed re- reading and drinking. <laughs> I do. You know, streamer more like online stripper. Okay, so yes, there is a sect of female streamers that what that that. How do may, I not know this? May have more lower cut shirts than you know you would typically find it going to the mall. You guys gonna get that FF7 remake? I think it done got it done got. I think you're gonna find out. I think you're gonna find out. So for me, I'm gonna go with a couple of books that are books. Shit, I'm so used to them in my halls. Um, just a couple of games. One, this is now a limited run game. I didn't know that was out. out. It's not. This is the Japanese version. Oh, okay. And I bought this, played it, beat it. It's honestly, it's okay. I really appreciated the fact that it was one dad, and I say one dad because he based this on his daughter, right? Uh, Madeline, because and this is a, if you love Ghosts and Goblins, I finished it, I beat it, but oh my god, there's so many glitches in this game. So I'm just a heads up. But that is Madeline Princess Madeline. It is coming out whenever the hell limited run decides to stop selling games and actually making them. <laughs> yeah. Oh, well, yes. They're on. There, there, there comes a time yeah. where there comes a time when you got to push pause on. Okay, guys, we need to stop because we are months behind, and this virus 
is you know it might like so speaking of limited run this finally came in this is blasphemous Blasphemous, yeah 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 cool i didn't i i haven't played this I but I, for it. I yeah i wanted to get it and i skipped out on the limited version and you know me most of the time i did like i always opt out for the limited version but for this i was okay with this because i haven't played it yet and i'm gonna probably end up loving it and i'm like damn it i should have gotten the limited version but uh, i went with that yeah. so that that's it uh for now what about you wait hold on say there's a couple of questions out there there's my boy chanda Suk and omar out here with the japanese first come on man look at us of course we got japanese yeah. versions of games we're actually- and, of, and of course we were schooling kids at the arcade actually the japanese version is superior Okay, all right, all right. But first of all, Chandasuk, your icon, your avatar is fantastic. So we, we've we been doing homeschooling, right? And we had a gym lesson about basketball. And I was like, children, I'm going to educate you all on who Michael Jordan is. So, like, now the children know who Michael Jordan is. So, well timed. I like that. Second one, Omar, what's your favorite Final Fantasy? Oh, is this you or? No, I'm Somebody. asking you. Oh, you are asking. Yeah, you I'm know asking. the answer to this. Say it. I'll show you. Yeah, show me. My wife and my kids, because of this horrible pandemic we're having, have been making little pixelated characters for me. Gosh, that's with fantastic. stand like there's little stands back there. You see them? Yep. And what are these from? This is Shadow mm-hmm. and Interceptor, Interceptor from Final <laughs> Fantasy VI, <clears throat> the greatest Final Fantasy game ever. Now, now I want you to notice. What did you say the game was called? Final Fantasy what number? Six, fool, because that's the only reason these kids understand these days. Back in our day, we called it Final Fantasy III. But that's now, the- nowadays, everybody calls it Final Fantasy VI. That's, ex- that's exactly my point that I'm making. No one says Final Fantasy III. No one blinks an eye. Oh, I'm so Fantasy. sorry. I apologize. I was just corrected. My wife alone made these. My wife alone. <laughs> <laughs> Mel with a correction. Hey, let let the kids have some props too. Let the kids have some props. My wife just came out, man, fuck them kids. I did all that. <laughs> <laughs> those we've actually been doing those too, some of the Pixar things. There's a big tub and there's a Mario kit. So we're probably gonna unlock that for the kids to play with too. Those things are really neat. But the point I'm saying is we are Japanese because the fact that look, 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 look. Science and science. These are these are amazing. Anyway, go ahead. Okay, sorry, I lost that soundtrack. Right over there, get the soundtrack to Final Fantasy VI. It's fantastic. But the point is, we all say six because we're all Japanese. Go. <laughs> okay. I just started collecting omnibus and comics again. I started a channel, Hellfire Comics. Hellfire. All right, man. Every, yeah, we're from we live in Kentucky, so when we think of Hellfire, we always think of some dude with a pickup truck going Hellfire. Hellfire. <laughs> get in the back of the pickup truck, boy. We're going down to the river. Anyway, uh, are you now, any more games? Uh, I got a couple more, but I want you to go ahead. I just I literally just have like two more. That's it. Okay, okay. So let me do one more. Um, well, one more, and then one more. Um, Taylor, you didn't miss Jack, man. You missed Rob just playing around with his VR headset for like an hour trying to explain that he's a PC gamer. No. No. Master Race, fuh, fooey on that. <laughs> if you want to play an actual game, you need buttons and a controller, and that is a PlayStation, a Nintendo, and even an Xbox. So you can take your little mouse and keyboard and go on somewhere. It's fine. Uh, speaking of actual video games that you can't buy on PC... I do like that game, Nocturne. I do like FF12, even though really six is the right answer. Hey, go ahead. Wait, wait, wait. Go ahead. Favorite battle-, battle system. My favorite battle system is ten, ten which is dumb. But you're dumb. And twelve, twelve is amazing because I give my kids the controller and they just grind for me. And then once you get that auto attack, your character you can fall asleep and your character just kills everything for you. And you're like, you wake <laughs> up and you're three levels up. It's amazing. Now I do like Final Fantasy XII's battle system, but my feel like I said, ten is my favorite. My second favorite is thirteen. I really, really, really got into the battle. Uh, look, man, you're getting schooled. Freddie said you can hook up a controller to a PC, Rob. Yeah, true, and I only play like when I play PC games, I only use an Xbox controller. Like, like absolutely. It's true. <laughs> There's no Mario games on a PC. I'm sorry. I made a YouTube video reviewing the McFarlane Amazing Spider-Man omnibus. It was so bad I deleted it immediately. Oh, don't do that. Don't do that. Because what you're going to do is you got to make the YouTube video. You leave it up. And then five years later, you go back and watch it. And you're like, man, I've come a really long way. Right. So I want you to undelete that video. 
Or unless you're us, and then we go back and watch our sh- stuff, and we're like, man, we haven't changed we, at all. We, we are still <laughs> terrible. As a matter of fact, we might have gotten worse. <laughs> Nocturne, see, Nocturne understands what's up. A game is on a console. Sorry. Well, you have Super Mario Brothers on a PC. When that happens, or an Animal Crossing on a PC, and I'm not talking about emulation, then we'll talk. It's just not going to happen. It's my, this is my wife's favorite, Final Fantasy. Actually, 10 is her favorite. 8 is her second favorite. I don't know why. I've watched her play it many times, and it's but awesome, man. I mean, it's, it's yeah, maybe did she play it when she's a teenager? It's a very teenager love story. I don't thing. know. I don't know. I don't talk to my wife about those kinds of things. Plays a game. <laughs> you want to tell your Final Fantasy VIII story again? Because that's a great story. Final Fantasy VIII. Yes. Do I have, do I have a Final Fantasy VIII story? Yeah, because you're all like, "Hey, buy the physical version of this." And she's like, "Forget you." <laughs> oh, when we got into a fight. <laughs> I, te- I texted you because out of all my friends, you're the only one that would appreciate it. Yeah, yeah. M- my wife, lover, right? Obviously, because I married her. And decides and that she wants side. she wants to play Final Fantasy VIII right now, and I'm like, awesome! Oh, look, it's available on the Switch. And she's like, okay, I'm gonna buy it. And I see the price; it's like thirty dollars. Three bucks is digital. And I said, no, no, you're not. We're gonna wait until this comes out physically. And then she's like. I'm a grown ass woman. I'm gonna buy this game. <laughs> and I swear, I genuinely get upset. I'm like, I storm out of that room. I'm like, made me mad. I text Rob. You won't believe what this. It's like, have you ever seen that Keel and Peels? Uh, Key and Peels. She said. She said. She, I said. I said. I said. <laughs> <laughs> and Rob said, "You said that. You said. You said that. You said. You said. You said it to her. You said it." Right? I, said, I text. I've heard that. Damn it, baby. <laughs> <laughs> I just, we I just, had to go space and have this conversation. <laughs> I'm just playing with you. <laughs> go to bed. Because the, the logic is if you're going to spend $30 on something digital, you might as well spend $30 on something. Oh, that's that right. That's right. I got that too. And you're holding your hand. So, like, yeah, I was like, dude. So that's what I did because I actually still don't have Final Fantasy VIII digitally because I waited. I got the well. Now there's now there's a physical coming with seven yeah. intact. But anyway, yeah. so yeah, that was the story. She ended up getting it, and, and I don't think she's played it. She's playing. <laughs> she's playing Symphony of the Night right now. <laughs> See exactly. You should have saved that duck. It's got the physical one. You've been all right. <laughs> I didn't go up the tree before I said that. <laughs> Big mistake. Yep. See, you got to go up the tree. We should have gone to space. I said. <laughs> Whoever said Squall's the man, I dressed up as him for Halloween, and the belts kept going down my legs. <laughs> Cause right, they get skinnier, so they just slip down. <laughs> but I agree, Squall is the man. <laughs> Squall, Squall is Squall is. I will say Squall is cooler than Cloud. I will say that. I'm not gonna get beat up, man. Come on, dude. Yeah, you are. You seen these guns? Okay. Even though she is a freaking black belt at Kempo's, she, yeah, she would so kill that's me. That's get beat up. Like straight doesn't matter when you get shot. Body shot. <laughs> let's go. All right, let's calm down. Right, let's calm down a little bit. Let's ask some questions. Do you think Square has intentions to remake eight and nine, even though it will probably take ten years or more to get the rest of seven? I think you just answered your question yourself. No, yep. I didn't see that because Final Fantasy seven is one of those things where, and we keep talking about Final Fantasy seven. I don't know why. It's one of those things where it's just it started a revolution. It started like a thing. When I worked at Babbage's. America's computer software headquarters. We sold so no, no, it's in, Melanie has great taste in characters. Baby, baby. We sold so many copies of that game to all kinds of people. Dudes, chicks, kids, old people. It sold like gangbusters. And like again, role playing games have been around for quite a while. I mean, this is Final Fantasy Seven, so there are at least six more that had come out, right? Yeah. And it was it was a thing. So like seven had a huge impact. Eight and up didn't have quite the impact. Not that eight was a bad game, although to me it didn't have as much soul as the other. I think I not. think seven. It was it was an interesting time in the states, right? Because when you and I and a lot of the people in the chat, I assume a lot of the people in the chat are our age. Who knows? Uh, growing up, we didn't get everything. Mm-hmm. Like growing up in America, we didn't get all the JRPGs, right? Like I remember finding out I was so pissed they skipped one of the Final Fantasies. Mm-hmm. I mean, between five. right when we went when they went from two to three, and they skipped five, and I know these numbers don't make any sense, but they do. They do. Um, <laughs> I was like, how can they do that? No, and then like, 
what is it, Live Alive and like Secret of Mana 2 and all these games that never came, or Second and Setsu 3. Second and Setsu 3. 3, three which- Trials of Mana, which is finally coming out. But so when this game came out, it was also the time when anime was about to boom. It was also the time when manga was about to blow up. So it kind of was like this perfect storm mm-hmm. for Final Fantasy VII. And you know how I feel about the game. But I, I definitely respect what it did for the video game medium, you know, and also just JRPGs in general. Because after that, every fucking JRPG came out in America. Mm-hmm. Yes, when- absolutely. Islander, Wild Arms, Ark the Lad, like it opened the floodgates to all these JRPGs. And again, like Omar, I too was the guy playing old school RPGs, Chrono Trigger, Final Fantasy 2, which is 4, Final Fantasy 3, which was 6. Any RPG I could get my hands on, Dragon Warrior, 1, 2, 3, 4, like anyone I can get my hands on, I was playing. Aren't 8 and 15 the top two best-selling Final Fantasy. That's, a, that's an interesting question. I really don't know, because I, I really thought... 15 is, which, which surprises me, because I think 15 is good, but I don't think it's fantastic. <laughs> Honestly, 15 and whatever comes afterwards is going to top sales. Like, whatever 16 comes out, it'll top the sales of 15. Let's see. Now, now I want to see Kempo demo from Metal Gear. Gear. We don't uh, need to see that. I'm a, yeah, we do. I'm a third-degree white belt. <laughs> my <laughs> wife could break my arms. So, not Xenogears, but Xenoblade on PlayStation. Uh, Persona, which is what we're going to talk about right here. This is Persona! See? Didn't this- you already have that game? Yeah, but I didn't play it. Well, no, I did play it. Only that sounds about right. Hour, so that's why I'm going to play the Royale Edition, because it has... Like, You're not going to play it. Don't. It, no, adds, it adds... Guys, let me, let, me, let, me, let me tell you something, guys. This is what all... All gamers, all collectors, we live a lie, and that's okay. It it's just you—you come, you get old enough when you admit there's that there's content in it. <laughs> <laughs> there's because Rob and I do the same thing. Like, and we talk about this in an episode about upgrading, right? It's like you get the game two years later, you still haven't played it, right? Let's say let's say Persona Five. You get the limited edition of Persona Five on the PS4 or the Switch, and then you still haven't played it. And then they remake it with, I don't know, a stupid like feature where you can change the girl's underwear colors, whatever. Yeah, what and it comes about. and it comes in a new box. And damn, Rob's like, okay, okay, God, it's time. I, I promise. Do. This time I'm gonna spend money. I'm gonna Wonder. play it this time. I mean yeah. it. I miss you know, you know me better than I know me. So and he buys it, and then three years later, when they remake it again on the PS5, he's gonna buy the limited edition box set. And we all do the same thing. This it's ridiculous. Mask. Somebody was asking about the Bravely Default series earlier, and I love Bravely Default and Bravely Second, and I cannot wait for Bravely Default Two, which is ridiculous, but I get the naming. That's, yeah, that's fine. When when that was announced, I was like, Bravely Default Two is that right? Dude, my game backlog is so big. A hundred hour RPGs have to wait. That's why I can't do those games anymore. Like I'm a realist when it comes to video games. I I read my comics, and I realize that with video games, I can't do those. 100 hour rpgs anymore especially like the this the strategy ones that i love so much growing up it's just that they're so time consuming okay i like justin's question here do you guys play from software games if so which is your favorite and how long do you last before you rage quitting uh, so i think i need to write a book on this my brother and i did write a book things i learn while playing video games and one of those things that i learn while playing video games is perseverance so because back when we were kids and games came out on the nes like they were 40 and 50 bucks, which was a lot of money back in the 80s. And we were kids, so it's not like we can be like, oh, let me just buy whatever I want. And they were hard because they had to last. So they were freaking hard. So games like Double Dragon 2 and Battletoads and Mike Tyson, you know, you had to pay, you had to learn to get good at these games. So games like from software games, I'm thinking of Sekiro, Bloodborne, Dark Souls, Demon mm-hmm. Souls, those type of games, right? Those games bring me back to uh, the old the old days where you lose and restart and lose and restart, like Celeste and things like that. So yes, play from software games. I'm very much looking forward to Elden Ring when that comes out. Pre-order that at Best Buy. And that shouts out to my Best Buy crew. From, uh, uh, from software, one, yeah. is that uh, the same guys that did Dark King- Souls? Yes, Dark Souls, Demon Souls. Yeah, good yes. job. So Kings. I am the smarts. Kings- I am the smarts. <laughs> So my favorite of those games is probably 
either Sekiro. Which Good night, Sean. Take care of yourself. My nurse going to give me night meds. Okay. 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 Take care of yourself. Watch this video in the morning because uh, stay I, healthy. We we took too long, but we'll get to something cool. So I want you to check out. Oh. What, what are we at the forty minute mark? Go to the forty minute mark. <laughs> <laughs> when you get back in the morning, we'll be fine. All right, so let's get this started. Let's do it so we can talk to the all right, chat. All right, hey, you, wait, you got to show your last game. Show your last game. I don't, it's really not that big. Look, it's just the metal box I found. Really cheap. <laughs> I, don't even, I don't even play these ridiculous games, but there are, it is. It's in the Pokemon? One of the last things I got while I was out, went to a flea market on a whim. Nice. Three bucks. Three bucks. Talked them down. Dollar fifty. Dollar fifty. <laughs> Yeah, see, this is the thing about Pokemon and like Animal Crossing. So oh, my, and I did, and I did get this too, Sonic Mania. Oh yes, that's very good. Uh, my kids saw Animal Crossing; and they were all hyped for it. I was like, "We're not going to do this." So I just got them Animal Crossing on their 2DSs. So they have been going. I've been waiting for you guys to get the. Cool, the cool, <laughs> all right, go ahead. All right, all no right, more right, stories sorry. about Animal Crossing. Go ahead, Break do your thing. No, do your thing. Playing Animal Crossing on the 2DS, and like that satiated that, and they have their own island. I'm actually really impressed that a seven year old and a five year old can like dig in. Props out to Animal Crossing. All right. Here's the big one. Today is April 9th. Final Fantasy VII Remake, the game that we've been waiting for either since 1997, so what is that, 23 years, or since 2015 when it was announced at E3, so five years. The game we've been waiting for comes out tomorrow, unless you ordered online. <laughs> So this, wait, I can't even see you guys. Can y'all hear me? Okay. This is final. Well, let's see what's in this box. Let's see what's in here. Let me get my cutting utensil. You did not get the big ass box version with the Hold on. play Hold arts on. figure, did you? Hold on. Hold uh, on. This is going to take three hours to open. It will take three hours. <laughs> is there a reprint of the volume? I'll answer some questions while you do that. Yes, sir. Oh, man, it comes in its own Play Arts box. Way to go, Play Arts. Oh, it uh, says Fragile. Well, shouldn't the Fragile be on the outside? That's that's the <laughs> That thing's going to be broken. You haven't opened it yet. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Go ahead and open it. I'll answer some questions. All right. All is right. there a reprint of the volume two Daredevil Omnibus? I have volume one. Yes, there is. And um, it should be restocked with volume one. Sometime this April is what Diamond was saying, but I don't know because of everything going on with Diamond distribution and all that. I don't know when people are going to start getting it. I know our sponsor, Cheap Graphic Novels, is looking at another way to get books without Diamond because they don't want people to go without books. But as I mentioned before on the show, and this is something I'll talk about on the Saturday live stream, I don't know what the discounts are going to be. And I seriously doubt they're going to be as good as when Diamond used to do it. Actually, just... yeah, Omar, you, you're actually bringing up a good good thing. Because like, without Diamond doing distribution, how else are you going to get your comics? Uh, oh, well, there's all the distribution. Final Fantasy came in the box. It's amazing. <laughs> Have you even opened the original game? Yes. It's not out of this. The thing that brings me happiness. So I play Final Fantasy VII occasionally, right? So when the PlayStation Classic came out and I got a Raspberry Pi with all the emulators and things like that, I still have my original save and my brother's original save when we got to like level 99 and we're at the north, the, the last area. I don't want to spoil anything. We're at the last area. So we have all the summons and we have all the cool things. So it really makes me happy to go back and play the beginning of this game and destroy the thing in Midgar and then go to the end and go play the end. So that's really cool that like I can still do that. And now I'm going to do that with this and see how close it is to this. Uh, you keep keep opening that <laughs> ridiculous just out of curiosity. What is the retail price on this thing? I don't know. Yes, you do. You no, when it came out, I was like, oh, my God, it's it's cloud. And I have never I have never bought anything like I've never bought a play arts action figure or play arts figure before. Ever. It looks like the one from the movie from the uh, sp it's not spirits within the Final Fantasy Advent, Advent Children. Children movie. Yeah. yeah, that's the one I have. So it I'm comes never, with the Harley. Anything like this before because uh, I wouldn't like because what was the last one? There was one. I think it was two, I forget what it cost. Two. It was Final Fantasy 15, and they had one. And I was like, "There's no chance that I'm going to pay this money for this for Final Fantasy 15, even though I really, really wanted to." I just was it was it 200 for that one? Uh, 250, I think. 250. Okay, 250. Yeah. So you're gonna 
we've we've done the math. You're gonna spend a thousand dollars on Final Fantasy VII if there's four chapters and they all have their collector's edition because you know the next one's gonna come with Sephiroth and his big sexy sword. Okay, so, and, the, and the one after that is gonna come with Aerith and Yuffie. So this is the thing: if it's Aerith, if the I'm not gonna do this again. Rob has some but the, y'all yeah, y'all hear that? <laughs> what are we at? What the was? We're at the 44 minute mark. Rob says I'm not gonna do this again. I'm gonna do it again. Join so, us for a live. I'm un- not gonna do it again unless it's Aerith. If it's Aerith, I'll do it again. If it's Sephiroth, I'm good. Although ooh, Sephiroth, I didn't think about Sephiroth. That'd be really cool. Okay, if it's Sephiroth or Aerith or Yuffie, no, not Yuffie. Tina. If it's Tina, Tifa, not open Tina. the damn box. <laughs> Quit lying to me. I'm not your priest. <laughs> I don't give a crap right. you're spending That's money on. Well, I mean, I'll have like 10 years to save up the money, so it'll be fine. Your kid's going to be like, man, Final Fantasy VII is so dumb. Oh my gosh, this is crazy. <laughs> oh, I'm going to drop it and it's going to break. So it comes with the bike. I think the bike is called something Daytona. Heady Harley. Day- Harley Daytona. Harley Daytona. All right. Har- so Hardy this- Daytona? Harley Switch. Square Enix better give us a Tifa that's statue. Man. Tifa. So that's so the- how big is he? Like six he- inches, seven inches? He is, I would say that is six inches. Okay. Uh, no, that's no, that's bigger than six inches. That's, that's about eight about inches, foot, I think. Dude. Almost a foot. Okay. Pretty so, big guy. And he comes with like, I guess, hands. Hands. Yeah. And, and there's the bike. Which if you play this game, I guess is the bike in Midgar? I guess it is. It's been a while since I've been. It's there. in the trailer. It's in the trailer. Okay. So there you go. I is this actually is really let me see if I can get a close up. Can I take this part? Where's off? where's the sword? Oh yeah, the sword. Can I right? Get- I mean it's not it's not cloud without the sword, right? It's pretty cool. So it's interesting that they okay. They Look, charge yeah, two hundred and anything two hundred and fifty dollars for an action figure, not a statue, because usually when they do these limited editions, they've done statues and i can answer this for rob oh. no he does not or he would be divorced i don't know what <laughs> statue is. he doesn't know. he doesn't need to learn <laughs> we, we, we no statue omar <laughs> it's something that i got into like i got two statues and realized i'm gonna end up living on the streets if i keep going so i have to sell these and never look back so i don't even look at their catalog they're beautiful they're expensive but they're beautiful statues man mm-hmm. you're right um again i am not a statue kind of i have a few they either they have been gifted to me, but like I have never, never like pur- this is the first one of these I've ever purchased. Like real talk. So, so well, check on Cage is saying I think we are going to get quicker in ten years. They already have the groundwork for an engine done. Maybe one game every year and a half. Maybe I would say uh, you're absolutely right. They're probably going to still use. I don't know if this. No, this does not use the Luminous engine. This uses Unreal Four. So my guess is the next one will be still on Unreal, but it'll probably be like PlayStation Four, PlayStation Five. So it should be maybe two years down the road. Irish, I, I have made this comment several times on the channel. Oh, my goodness. I, I came really close to buying that Berserk Guts statue, but I know damn well my uh, my personality. I have a very addicting personality. I would get Guts, and I know they would release Femto. They would release Griffith. They would release Casca, the Band of the Hawk. They would release the uh, the God Hand. And, and then before I, I, I am sleeping with 10 statues in my bed because my wife and kids have left. And that's all I got. <laughs> I would be. Don't get me wrong. I'd be a happy man, but I would be a lonely man. You'd be a lonely happy man. So Omar has go. to choose between Omnis and Staff. Choose. He chose wisely. Yeah, I mean, if money wasn't a thing, then yeah, absolutely, I would completely get those statues. They're gorgeous. Is that the? Is the Gus one the one that's really, really, really tall? Like, is he huge? Oh, he's huge. Yeah, I'm the same way, Omar. I'm all or nothing kind of. I'm the same way, brother. So I try not to go down that path. Right? If I know that path is gonna lead down a dark alley no way so all right so cool. that's that all right what, what else does this come with it does not come with the game it's just the figure <laughs> it comes with a digital code for final fantasy <laughs> <laughs> oh, I hope, actually you know i'm joking where is the game i hope there's a game in here oh <laughs> here we go wouldn't that be funny no game in the bus like um, what's in here all right we'll see what you got let's see what this is Oh, so we get a lanyard. Tifa and Aerith. Aerith. Is it Aerith or Aerith? It is Aerith. There's my... Hey, yo, what's up? It's my comparable bitch. Cloud, you got people on the planet, dog. You know what I'm saying? We got to save the planet. And you got to sell us the offering plate. Can I get an amen? 
How about a boom shakalaya? Racism. Let's game with five fantasy seven. Don't you wish? All right, let's see. Okay. And it comes with the deluxe edition. Thank goodness it actually comes with the game. I was a little worried that, like, oh, did I push the wrong button? Maybe it doesn't come with the game. Omar, did I lose you? All by myself. So check it out. So here's the art. There's the main cast. Open um, that box, Rob. There we go. O open that box, Rob. I don't know. I don't Do it. Know. I don't know. Know. Open that box. If I you open gas, it, bitch. I'm open the box. <laughs> All right, I'll open it. Look, just I'm proof. Man, I never open games. I'm going to open this. He doesn't. This is amazing. <laughs> you open that damn box. I right, think. Right. Okay, so correct me if I'm wrong, but is that the limited or is that the deluxe edition that's available for sale by itself? Yes. That's yes. like eighty dollars. That yes. one right there. This okay. Is the deluxe edition. So you can get this tomorrow. And in fact, we uh, in one of the previous videos, I put a link to this item, so I think it's still available on Amazon. So I am I am going to open this because I'm going to play this tonight. Now it's, it requires two discs and it's a hundred freaking gigs, so I better try and start installing it now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Are you going to play? You should, I should have read it. He said not to do it. Shit. Uh, that man don't want to break the seal. <laughs> Oh that's how, that's how I guilt him. Don't, don't act like he doesn't oh. have another deluxe edition somewhere Why? else. That. Open it. Why did you look what you made me do? I could have got it digitally, and then I'm gonna have to open it. You jerk. What, what will suck is for all the fans waiting for Final Fantasy VII is when they finally get it, and it's the biggest game, or they change way too much and just pisses everybody off. Oh, it won't be buggy yet. What's what's gonna be trippy is when they charge fifty dollars for the downloadable content of keeping Aerith. Aerith. <laughs> all right, so here's the game. Oh, very, very similar okay, to the American. Okay. Let's, let's actually do the comparison. Look, so, look, dude, look at that. Andrew's saying, open it. No, I can't believe y'all made me open this. Okay, near me condition, the subscribers, I want you to show you. This is it. This is me talking directly to you. I must love you because I would have never opened this. <laughs> he, would, he would not have. <laughs> never opened this. I would have bought the digital one and sit it aside. But for you, I opened this and I feel so horrible. <laughs> Like after the show, he's gonna go cry, and I'm gonna love it. I'll I'll film it for our Andrew Patreon. Right now, only worth twenty bucks. I ruined it. I can't. I'll, I'll, use I'll film the cry Rob crying for our Patreon. <laughs> yeah, that's real funny. So here, here's a look. That's what it looks like. That's actually really daggone close. That's really cool. That's really cool. That's pretty I cool. Think man. I think had a chance to play like the. We love you too, man. Thank you, Maverick. <laughs> I, I do. I do love you guys. I really. We're do. proud. I feel like I'm in AA. We are proud of you for opening it. <laughs> look, look, look. If I'm going to do it, I'm going to. No, I'm not going to open it. Okay, I have to. This one doesn't matter now. I'll just keep my collector's edition for Cyberpunk and go regular for Final Fantasy VII. I All right. I do not have the collector's edition of Cyberpunk. I didn't go that far because so tech has already started. He's saying Final Fantasy not as buggy as Final Fantasy 15, and it is amazing. All right, there you go. See, okay. We love you too, Rob. Get that shrink wrapper. I'm surprised he doesn't have one of these shrink wrappers. I actually knew a friend of our. Don't we? We have a a, a mutual friend that actually reseals his games. Ooh. I'm not gonna call him out. Nope, sure does. <laughs> but he reseals his games, not to sell. To just put back on the shelf. Back on the shelf. And like, I've really, literally thought about doing the same thing. Literally thought about. Doing I don't. Even, I don't even know if he watches our show, but it, it'd be funny. Like, he, I swear to God, he bought a sealer just to reseal his games, and I'm like, I think that I doesn't have a Sony logo on it. <laughs> oh, oh, we have to show the inside of the game. All right, so it comes with Nocturne. This is turned into a live unboxing AA. Me, yeah, it really that. has. All right, so uh, I want to hide this code, but here is a Cactar summoning code. There you go. Oh, I'm gonna, I just screen capture that before you. Oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> I have until next year to use it. Oh, I have it for a while to use it. That's a good and question. It, How many people have already started playing it? No, I mean, I assume if I have this, that it's already available. Well, pe people in Europe already got like their physical copies like yeah. at the beginning of the week. Omar, dude, are these action figures? Can you buy these dudes? Yeah, that's how they hook you. You bought the 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 the. the that's the play art stuff. Look Look at Aerith and Tifa. Oh, my God. Oh, this is a bad thing. You shouldn't show me this. Good job. <laughs> now I want to buy the action figures. Oh, it has a reversible cover. <gasps> is the it. Japanese cover on the reverse side? Uh, which is the classic. Yeah, I think it was just a white cover, wasn't it? Yeah, it was just, yeah the, the Japanese version was white. Yeah, uh, and all it said was Final Fantasy VII. Maybe the airship was on it. Disc. 
data mm-hmm. disc, and then the play disc. So What's let, the reversible cover look like? Let's take a look. Look, we're learning things together. T4 Eris. Oh, that's mm-hmm. awesome. So it's question. Wait, wait, wait. So the original one was white, and this one is oh, black. Is black. Oh, I love when they do stuff like that. I like this. Now, so that fan- was the cover to the Japanese version. My fa- my Final Fantasy 15 had a reversible cover too, and I put it in black mode. So I might do that for this. So, so this- we did you a favor, man. Freddie said, "Look at all that stuff you were missing from not opening the." Oh, there's Lock there's the more block. stuff. Even though I'm having a small panic attack, I- I'm probably going to sit down and like rock myself to sleep <laughs> and everybody we just want to remind you all to hit that like button if you haven't subscribed yet please don't forget Smash the notification icon <laughs> so you don't, don't forget don't forget that notification icon and let you know when we're going live all right, all right, all right. so if i'm doing this i'm going to go do it all the way all right here we go here is a, it comes with a <laughs> black <laughs> cover from when we are mourning to mourn the loss of that seal that you just broke <laughs> oh my god see fires maybe i can buy another one I'm going to buy another one and put it in the box. I don't get... even know who you're playing with. Like, I know you've got another one, that little dumbass backpack you got back there <laughs> that says Lava Jump. <laughs> oh, no, no. This is a, this is a, this is a pillow. Oh, a pillow. Isn't that dope? <laughs> you even have that sealed. I... You have that sealed. You still have... Oh, it is sealed. Look, there's a tag on it. <laughs> Why would I open a pillow? All right, so this is the mini soundtrack. Here's some of the tracks. Look, my man and man 40, personally, I will hold off until... The whole game is complete and get it on the PS5. You want to wait until 2045. All right. <laughs> hey, that's okay. That's his prerogative. You remember. Okay. Yeah, I'm not. And he's also the, I think that's the seventh doctor. Yeah, the seventh doctor, seventh I doctor. believe. Okay, nice. So um, I can't give In Man 40 any grief because you remember, Omar, I said to you, hey, Omar, let's not watch Evangelion until all the movies come out. And, and I like, laughed in your face. And it, when would I say that? How many years ago did I say that? Uh, 2000, and it was before I got married, 2008, 2007. <laughs> now, do we have all the Evangelion movies released in 2020? Why are you making me answer that? Because the answer you knew back in 20, 2008 <laughs> was no, and no. it was never going to be no. released. Well, that means we would have never seen it, so that's the point. So it's okay. Uh, Deluxe edition art book. So let's thumb through this. This, this would be pretty. Oh, so there's an art book. Nice. Uh, let's see. Character summons enemies environment. So I, if you want to be spoiler free, close your eyes. I'm just going to do this. Oh, we have a foreword in Japanese and in English with, with the original producer. So what's cool about this? I was right. Uh, nice. Mr. Oh, McCoy, the seventh uh, doctor. A lot of the same team, like the same director, <laughs> producer. <laughs> that oh, wow. our boy got that sewn violin. You better, <laughs> you better, you better get that spine stretched out and flex it out. God, y'all are making me work. So the original producer, director, like everyone's on board except for Hiroshi Yamauchi, but uh, everyone is on board for this. So like a lot of the same team are working on this. Look at who, Cloud. Who, who was not on board? Uh, her, 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 uh, Hiroshi Yamauchi, the guy, the gooch, the guy who made the original uh, storyboard or storyline. He's not there. He really? He started Miss Walker, I think is the name of that company. And they did Blue Dragon and some other games. Remember all that? Oh, yeah. I forgot about Blue Dragon. I think I was the only one that played that game. Nope, uh, I did. The, um, what Art. about any Yoshitako Mano? Uh, I think he's on here. I haven't seen him. You know, now that you say that, we've been thumbing through no, this. Not, not that he did a lot to begin with in the original Final Fantasy VII, because he was no. completely out of the Final Fantasy stuff no. by Tessie then. Or he's on board, so you, he's original. He was the original character design yeah. guy, right? Yeah. Yeah, so... Yoshitaka Amano, he yeah, I think he did he did a couple pieces of art, but he didn't do much for Final Fantasy VII, I don't believe. Unlike Akira Toriyama, who keeps that series going. Weapons, you can get in a jeep and a bike. So that's pretty cool. That's really neat. Okay. Off to make dinner stay strong, Rob. I appreciate y'all praying for me. The last thing it does come with is a steel book with Sephiroth. All right, box in the back. Oh, dude, your steel box is. Oh, it's got a big dirt. dirt. That's just dirt. That was a big Stop dent. It. Stop it. <laughs> Let's look at that. Sephiroth. So I did. So I was traveling when the Final Fantasy VII, um, when the Final Fantasy VII demo dropped, and 
I, it was all I could do not to just buy a PlayStation and, <laughs> and log in and buy buy. I didn't do that. Uh, but when I came back, I played the game, and there were a couple times where I had to put down the controller because of the music or what was happening. I was like, oh my god! Like the battle music came up, I had to stop for a second. I was like, this is beautiful. The intro, I had to stop. So I'm, I'm, I foresee me putting down the controller many times, going, this is so beautiful. So oh, it, man, it, I can't wait to buy that steel book for three dollars and fifty cents at a yard sale, and then tackle the guy down to a dollar fifty. That's what I do. <laughs> so there you go. That is the big thing we wanted to show up. I actually had some different things I want to show, but forget that this came in like this literally came in a couple hours before we were going to do this live so it was like okay if it came a day early let's freaking open it it's not march this is an april haul so we'll, i'll pretend and do it like next month <laughs> but there you go final fantasy 7 remake and i am never buying anything this expensive again like my wife is pissed at me <laughs> yeah right rob have have they said how far into the remake story do they go for the full price? Like, yeah, don't worry so about spoilers. Right before, right before the end of disc one. So this is all of Midgar. But if you recall, the end of disc one was a little bit past the end of Midgar. Up to the Golden Saucer, I think. Well, to be fair, disc three was what? Nothing but the last dungeon, right? Yeah, yeah. So, so, so they've said, they haven't said how many of these they're going to do. My guess is, my guess is they're going to do three three of these. Uh, it sounds like three. Yeah. yeah. And this is going to, this is a, like, they're, according to some reviews and things like that, there's not like much filler. It's like, it's supposedly very fleshed out. And like I said, I played the demo and the demo was like, I could go places and a lot of the same scenes now, when Cloud you... was up at the tower, like that stuff is still there. There's a lot more to it. Oh, oh, wait a minute. Somebody's trying to one up me already. I'll pay $8 hey, for that steel book right now. One time yeah. offer. Take it. <laughs> so here's a question. Uh, my wife played it both in English and in Japanese, and in order to do that, she had to switch the system settings. Like, is there an easier way to do that? Like, can you choose uh, languages in within the game? Probably. I I, I don't know because I mean, I literally. Oh, I figured you would have played the demo. In no, English. I, in the demo, I don't remember seeing a Japanese language. I don't. Remember well, so, yeah. So she had to switch the system settings to Japanese, my and guess... that's how she get. And that's how she got to play it. Let's see, yeah, I. I don't. That's a good question. So, <laughs> Shonda Sue just realized, holy hell, they're selling games in parts. <laughs> Isn't that a scam? When you have a franchise like Final Fantasy and you've got fanboys that will buy hundred and fifty dollar toys, uh, like it just happens. You yeah. know, it's going to happen. I think that they did the same thing with Final Fantasy fifteen, right? It was a Play Arts exclusive. Uh, yeah, there was a there was a dude. It was actually it was Noctis, and it, like. There's sometimes that I have buyers, or not buyers remorse, but um, feeling of missing out because Noctis looked really cool. But but like Final Fantasy 15 was a legit good game. And then did you, did you finally beat Final Fantasy 15 though? Yeah. No. Okay. No. No. <laughs> so so there you go. You're okay with not buying that. Yeah. Well, but I could have had Noctis. But anyway. yeah. But then he, like he could have totally turned into a douchebag by the end of the story, and okay, then he would have been like, oh. I have this crappy toy of doctors. I, I, I trust Square. Once they get their going, I trust the storytellers. I trust those guys. I trust the writers at Square. But like Final Fantasy VII, like, yeah, okay. So me, I like Final Fantasy VII, especially like the music and like, you know, certain things, aspects of the game that it really did push RPGs forward, summons, all that. I love Final Fantasy VII. But, they're, but I'm not like the biggest fan. And as a not the biggest fan, I bought the big crazy edition. So if I did this, how many <laughs> other people are doing it? Final Fantasy, Final Fantasy MC, Dirty Pop. <laughs> My boy Bryant, he was showing me pictures of his unboxing. He was like, look. And I was like, no, you didn't. And he said, I sure as hell did. And I was making fun of the character designs in Final Fantasy VII. He wasn't even hearing it. And he was like, I don't care, man. You're not going to ruin them. Like, you're, <laughs> you're not going to piss them off. Right? <laughs> <laughs> so, Final Fantasy VII. Or Final Fantasy XV did happen. I'm it, Andrew. I'll it, get there. Really he didn't say what happened. I'll get there. I'll and you know you're not. Come on, Rob. Shut up. I will. But average lifespan, how long these games take. Yeah. Might as well watch a video. Pew no, watch, I'll, might as well watch PewDiePie play the ending of Final <laughs> Fantasy XV. Forget that guy. All right. So there you go. That's our March slash April unboxing for Near Mint Condition. Appreciate you guys. Holding my hand going through this. I we talked a lot about a cool we talked a lot of, about a cool things. JRPGs. We should have like a JRPG episode. We've done that once before. We could do that again. So 
Yeah, yeah, we actually we should get uh um I mean to tell you like we should get Shane on one of these since I know he ain't going nowhere. He's in California working at Sony. I, I was talking still, to right? him today actually. Yeah, and he is super hyped for Final Fantasy as well. So, so as he should be because this again he and I worked at Babbage's in Wall and Software at the same time. So like you know like this is one of these things that we could talk about. Did Square ever go in and pass the in gameplay of Final Fantasy 15? Um, yeah, yeah actually, they did. They did. Yes, they, they did. and they fixed the difficulty level on that. I don't want to ruin it. There was a part where it got really difficult, but I loved because you had to go like Metal Gear stealth mode. Yeah. It's freaking awesome. Like halfway through the game, something happens, and if you know if you played it, you know what I'm talking about. It's awesome. But uh, they did fix that. They did fix that. Yes, they did. You know you can did get that digitally and not have to store that box of junk, right? Come on, Matthew. Look uh, who you're talking to. Why did you say that? I could have not done this. Take it back. Oh, I can't even take it back now. I opened it. Thanks, guys. <laughs> Rob, I haven't beaten 15 I'll, I'll, yet I'll, either. Thanks. Look, man, between me and I think, what was it, Terrence, I'll give you 20 bucks for the toy. He gives you $8 for the steel box. You keep the damn game. And look, you almost came out even. Mm. Right? Not at all. Not at all. <laughs> you keep your digital code. <laughs> there were some really good questions in the chat earlier, and one of them was, uh, have we played Super Mario Brothers RPG? And I know the answer is, oh, hell yeah, we have. Of course. Of course. We, we absolutely have. That was a Squaresoft and Nintendo collaboration. Mm -hmm. And yeah, I said Squaresoft. Squaresoft, not Square Enix. Squaresoft. Not Square Enix. That's right. All right. So it was a great game. Do you think on the maybe I should ask ask myself this question, but you think Super Mario RPG will be one of the things that's in the alleged Mario collection? No. No, don't think so. Well, I mean, I think it has to do with copyrights, right? Um, well, not to make a new Mario or like maybe it won't be Mario RPG, maybe it'll be like Paper Mario or something. Paper Mario. I'd love to see a Paper Mario collection, honestly. Uh we know Mars a physical guy, but Rob, are you a physical or did you oh shit. This guy? <laughs> wait, till we do, wait till he does his video game tour. Go ahead. Uh, much, Go ahead as, much as Omar is a physical guy about comics, I'm very much a physical guy because, like, earlier in the video, I was trying to show off Half Life Alex. I'm like, I can't show you Half Life Alex because I don't have the silly game. <laughs> so, yeah, I'm very much a physical guy. And one of the big reasons, A, I like something like something in my hand. Like, when I buy music, I like to buy vinyl or CDs or t tapes, cassettes, I do that too. Like I like something in hand. But the other reason this has been really handy is like I have children and I want to show them some of these old games. And some of these games that are digital I can't show them anymore. But stuff that I can take the disc, stick it in and it works. That's Thank you, cool. Michael. So there you go. So yeah, I'm definitely a physical more so than a digital person. Homer's a physical, very physical. He keeps flexing and talking about roughing people up. <laughs> Just, and it's only women. I feel so bad. But What's wrong with you? Uh, that, and all equal opportunists, man. They're coming up on me. Don't come up yeah. on me. I guess. I guess that's not sexist. Uh, that, nope. No. no, no. Uh, Rob64, what do you think of custom arcade cabinets? I have a Rec Room <laughs> Masters yeah, one, I know lunchbox. Exactly what you talk about. Mm -hmm. Okay. Austin, I like you. You have good taste. So maybe we'll have to do we'll have to do an episode talking about arcade cabinets, arcade hardware, and custom cabinets. Because I have a few one up arcade cabinets, and one of them I've customized. I put a Pandora Six in there, and did some stuff with the artwork. It switched out buttons and joysticks and spinners and things like that. I've had a lot of fun. And I, I said earlier, there's paint on me. Where's the paint? Did I wipe it off? Okay, the paint is a certain color blue, and if you know your arcade hardware, I, maybe I got rid of it, maybe it wiped off. It's on my pants, dang it! The, the, the paint is a certain color blue, and there's a reason why it's a certain color blue, so we could talk about that another time. So yeah, we should totally have an arcade like discussion, that'd be awesome. We have a guy that has a YouTube channel, that's what he does, his, uh, Delusional Arcade, He's a, uh, he watches our show, really nice dude, he has Instagram. He, fix, he doesn't do custom, like he fixes up arcade machines. Mm -hmm. And that's like a, that's a, so like I only got into arcade hardware very recently. <laughs> there, there you go. <laughs> I'm not gonna do that. That's, that's offensive. Only got arcade hardware. I love Andy Kaufman though. But there's a lot of things I learned like about like you know how circuit boards and wiring and monitors and not shocking twenty thousand volts in your face and things like that. So it's a really it's a different world than console games and it's a lot of it's a lot of fun things. And also like you know it's one of those things where action figures you buy your first giant play arts thing it goes the statues it goes down arcade harbor is the same way you get one you're like okay that was really neat i should get another one i should get another one and then you run out of room and your wife leaves you so gotta reel that back 
that's why we got each other's backs. I'm gonna be crying at home with, you my, I be. with my berserk statues, and Rob's gonna be alone with his <laughs> con <laughs> like his arcades. <laughs> Dude, but we have the best bachelor pad ever. Comments ever. Pads. Like, no ever. girls would ever come and see. <laughs> <laughs> no chicks would ever come in the door. But, man, but, wait, like, but man. all the dudes would be like, man, you guys are so fucking cool. And I'm like, I'm so lonely. I'm so lonely. <laughs> I can't. <laughs> good. I mean, y'all are starting rumors now. Come on, man. Don't get all crazy. No, 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 Amanda, no. And Amanda and I were joking about that yesterday. The tinkering is almost as fun as actually playing yes, the game. I believe that. Exactly. And, and that's the thing, too, is like you actually have to find somebody that actually works on arcade machines, yep. too. Because if you don't know a guy or you can't learn yourself and your system breaks down, you, you'll have, you have a, like a doorstop that's like $300, $500. So. Yeah. so I found a local guy who does uh, – um, uh, his name is Stephen Lawson. So if you ever need – if you have arcade hardware I and mean, you're in Kentucky, contact Stephen Lawson. But he fixed my monitor on my Donkey Kong because it was like kind of squished, and um, like like he decapped it. And this is a huge deal, like to go and do this. And he also does all the work at um, um, Arcadium and the Burl Arcade and all around. Like he's a really good guy, and he actually used to work at Walton Software. He's a really sharp kid too. It's like we know each other, don't we? He's like yeah, yeah. So yeah, like like. Like, there's paint on me because I was painting this thing, but I also bought some wood putty, and I'm filling in some of the gaps. And, like, it's a lot of fun, like, working on stuff. Replacing buttons and joysticks, like, oh, all that works. The bane of my existence is medium kick. Medium kick just quits working for me on all these things all the time. Like, oh, my God, medium kick is busted again. So I don't know if it's going to be Fighting game lingo. Fighting game lingo. There you go. There you go. Somebody, was it Lionheart? Lionheart was uh, challenging us on Street Fighter V. Street Fighter Five, I think, or King of Fighters, one of those. But I'm sure we'll be doing this I'll again. We should play Street Fighter, and you wait. You're this way. You should play King of Fighters. Uh, I give you a hard time, but you should see my unplayed board game collection. Oh man, we all have stack. I call uh, when I went to see my buddy Omni Dog Jess. I started stacking his books up for him, and I'm like, all right, let's be real, Jess. And I did the math. I was like, looks look how old we are. You know, realistically, how big these books are. So I started, like, because he had a pile of to read books. And then I said, all right. So I took all his to read books and I stacked them up in the delusional pile, is what I like to call it. I'm like, this ain't <laughs> happening, dude. You're not never going to happen. And he looked at me and he was like, damn, I think you're right. I said, may. And then I made a maybe pile. And then I made a, all right, a, a, a to read pile. This is actually doable. I think it's a small pile. I think he told he took a picture. He was like, "I'm still going through this damn thing." This was back in October of last year. Yeah, we we had an episode recently on uh, "Do you have a problem buying stuff?" And I came to the realization that yes, <laughs> so I need to be realistic on what I am and am not going to play. So the reason I was okay, another reason I opened Final Fantasy because I am actually going to play it. But like our halls are going to be not quite as impressive after The Last of Us comes out. And Ghost of Tsushima, it's not going to be very exciting because it'll just be a little small. It'll be like little retro halls, too. Yeah. What if that's the condition David Gabriel gives you for a new Warriors volume 2? Gotta live. Fight. Uh, yeah, I'm okay with that. Oh, look at Lionheart. I challenge you guys in both. I mean, his Omar. icon is Blanca, so yeah, that's pretty dope. We have to do this. Thought he was downsizing for a while there. No, he's not. <laughs> no, he's not. <laughs> Sudoku gang. That's right, man. Sudoku. We all in the same. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Just keep buying and buying, man. All oh, right. I have nine. Damn, that's that's something to be proud of, man. Wow. wow. I probably have Media. Media. Well, like, you know, being locked in the house, it gives me more time. Like I said, I did put 40 hours in a Half-Life Alex, and I'm getting ready to start this. Ooh, really. ooh, ooh, ooh. This is a good question. Awesome. Before we get going. Messenger. This is a really good question. The oh, good choice. The messenger. messenger was excellent. Um. Oh, damn it. Sea, sea of Stars. They're doing not a sequel, but like in the same universe. It's a traditional RPG. Same guy, Sabotage uh, Studios. So that's on Kickstarter. So if you like the messenger, which I know you did, check out Sea of Stars. Still Man, I, I play nothing but Switch games. There's a lot of shooters, like the the Psycho, Sikio Collection, Volumes 1 and 2. Those Black are awesome. Future this is a good one, too. Black Future 88. Check that out. But... Uh, Owlboy. I thought Owlboy was a hidden Owlboy. gem that not a lot of people talk about. It's a beautiful game. Uh, Monster Boy. Monster. <laughs> I don't know, which is really Wonder Boy 4. But that's that, those are kind of games I don't really hear a lot of people talk about. 
And I was going to go with the Messenger, but I'm glad Rob did. It was an awesome game. I loved it. Uh, you need to emphasize Monster Boy 4. I mean, Wonder Boy, th- that game. <laughs> Amazing soundtrack. Great Beautiful. Game. Beautiful Wonder- graphics. Great graphics. Like, yeah, those, those yeah, the Messenger and Mon- Wonder Monster, that game. Oh, damn, Freddy. That sucks, man. I'm so sorry. <sighs> All your neighbors are down. Sorry, man. Do you need some of those noise canceling headphones? Do y'all recommend playing Kakarot? No. I I I think I'd rather watch Dragon Ball Z. No, no. I would wait. I I have not picked up Kak- uh, Kakarot. I probably will if it goes down to twenty bucks. But no, no. And it even came with like a real cool Goku figure on Nimbus and stuff. No. What's your favorite PS4 exclusive? Um, great question. I'm gonna go with The Last of Us, even though it's a remake of a PS3 game. And if not The Last of Us, then Uncharted Four. What about you? Heavenly Sword? Not Heavenly Sword. Uh, Horizon Zero Dawn or God of War? So I'm going to say The Last of Us Part 2. That's not a thing, you yeah, idiot. It, I, it's not coming out yet. It, it will come out one day. It will come out one day. It was, de- it was delayed. But no, but like you said, The Last of Us one of my favorite, and this is really saying something, one of my favorite games in the past it was amazing. Years is the original last. But really, I mean, it was a it was a remake of a PS3 game, so it wasn't really a PS4 game. But I guess Last of Us Two is. What was your go to? This is an excellent question because I have several. So, like one of the things, and I'm, we're going to do this. We're going to talk about games that defined us. So my go is I've already done the comics that defined us. Oh, the comic version. So I'm going to do the video game version of this. Yeah, yeah, man. Kid. Um. Mega Man 2, Mario 3, Zelda 1. Oh, you Rob can't choose one. I can't choose one. I, I choose an arc if I can choose an arcade, it would be Bubble Bobble because of the magical times that my brother and I going to the gas station to try to play and beat the shit out of that game and always getting our ass handed. My kids play Bubble Bobble almost every day. They freaking love that game. They my arcade. daughter my daughter and I love the arcade. But my youngest daughter Street Fighter and Street. champion edition. Um, and then if I had to choose a console game, that would be Secret of Mana. With my brothers. my brothers, just love yelling at them, making them cry, because that's the way I play. <laughs> you're the healer. You're the you're the tank. I'm the leader, and I'm holding the bucket. <laughs> Y'all need to stand in my bucket. I love playing upscaled PS1 and PSP games on the Switch. I do too. I think they're wonderful. Um, Symphony of the Night, really good on the Switch. Yes, it looks really. <clears throat> Really Waiting for a physical copy, though. <laughs> yeah, good luck with that. Come, come on, man. Come on, Konami. Bloodstain. Give me Alucard. Give me Trevor. No. And that anime is tight. All right. Thank you, everybody, for joining us. We'll be doing this again. Um, maybe not. Maybe we'll do a haul, but maybe next month we'll we'll try to get our buddy Shane on this uh, to talk about video games and the possible things that could be coming in the future. Something like that. Shane works at uh, Sony. Rob works at Gun Media. Gun Media, Media Studio. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to let you answer, not me. Yeah, thank you. Appreciate that. I um, got you, man. Don't forget to hit that like button. Like, subscribe, smash that notification icon so you get updates the second new content drops. And remember, gamers who play together, stay together. So love one another. Keep gaming. Please be safe. Wash your hands. Social distancing. And keep gaming. Yeah. All right. Peace. M- much love, everybody. Y'all have a good night.